Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me today. You're watching Art on the Creek and I'm so happy you're here with me in my home studio in Parker, Colorado. We have had a beautiful, beautiful week with weather and everything should be looking great and feeling sunny and rosy, but I haven't been. I've been kind of blah lately, you know, just kind of everything just seems meh. And it's kind of affecting my art and I really don't have a reason for it other than um, maybe I'm bored, I don't know. <laughs> but I think that this probably happens to a lot of you. And for today's review, what I thought I would do was try a new media because I really need to get a spark. I need to light a fire under my art again. And for me, when I do that, it's to go back to pastels. They are some of my first loves. And I really wanna test this Paul Rubens brand of oil pastels that I purchased a while ago and haven't really used that much um, because I kind of fell in love with Neo Colors in the meantime. So eh, let's take a look at these and let's see if they're worth your time and money, number one. And number two, let's talk a little bit about getting in an art rut and how you might want to get out of it. Are you ready? Let's go discover some things. Here is the set I want to take a look at today, and I've had this since 2021. They've changed the packaging since then, it looks like. Um, and there is not a lot of information on these pastels themselves. Now, sometimes on the product, you'll be able to find pigment information, light fastness information, all of the things that you'd love to know about. Um, but now the way that these are packaged in this particular version that I have, mostly the information that you have on all but one, I believe, uh, is simply the color name and um, you know I will try and translate some of the information from the label with uh, with my phone and I'll see what I can come up with but um, if I can get a hold of the pigment information of the entire list of 48 here I will put that for you d down in the description if you're really interested in that now again I just want to show you real quick here my set is from 2021 but you can see there's really not a lot of information on the pastel itself uh, there's the name, oil pastel, and some Chinese writing, and then all of the uh, information with the barcode and the, the safety standards. And on only one in my set <laughs> does it include pigment information. See how this is kind of written in a different font? Uh, the yellow one has the, the kind of italicized, uh, and the other one is more of a block letter. This packaging here has the name of the color, permanent lemon yellow, PY3, PW6, the four light fastness stars. And it also says that feels softer, experience nicer, and has the same information for the rest of it. But for the most part, these really don't have a whole lot of information on them. So, um, you know, that way, if for that reason, that's the main reason I say, don't let's not use these for, uh, you know, a commission piece because you can't really be sure of what pigments you're getting. Um, this is what my phone does to the translate. <laughs> The, the experience nicer feel softer changes it to a noodle. So there is that. But the translate definitely works for the name of the color. And it also works pretty well here. They simply printed the, uh, the company contact information. And then finally this one. This one was a bit of a mystery only because my iPhone did not give me the option to translate. So I chose copy and look up and then I will give you my screen recording here. So it does go to oil pastels, many different brands, many different kinds. Um, the Sennelier oil painting sticks are mentioned. So I'm pretty sure it just says oil pastels right there, but um, yeah, not a lot of information other than color name. So I'll see what I can find out. And if I can get any more pigment information for you, then I will put that down in the description below. Uh, the first color that I'm using is that lemon yellow and um, it's going on just fine. I really probably should have cleaned it first <laughs> before I started using it. And the best way to clean your pastels is just on a soft cotton rag or a chamois. Um, I, uh, I have uh, cut up old t-shirts that I use for that purpose. The color that I'm going in with now is called permanent yellow and just adding a little bit of uh, brighter, warmer yellow to this one lemon on top because that's the one that I want to make the, the ripest 
and let's see I'm going to use a paper stump to blend these if you're not familiar with these I'm kind of cleaning it off it has some charcoal on it I'm still using that paper towel uh, again that would be easier to do on a rag or with a sander uh, you can use a pastel sanding sharpener or an emery board to just clean them off or you can use an exacto knife and shave it down to whatever shape you like um, this is one way to blend oil pastels these particular pastels are a little bit sticky I don't know if that's because they're older I don't remember them being quite this sticky when I used them before but uh, pastels should last forever so and I've had them in the box out of the sun um, so I was a little bit a little bit aware of their stickiness but they were blending just fine they worked really well I don't think that's a negative I think it's just something that uh, happens to be kind of a characteristic of these after oh a couple years of just sitting still uh, let's see here now for the next color I want to add some shadows in here and the good way to add shadows with something like lemon is uh, to go with the opposite color on the color wheel so I'm choosing a lavender because I don't want it to be too dark this is an ultramarine violet actually and um, what that's going to do is it's going to turn kind of brownish on the the lemon there where I mixed it and you can see I blended that just in with my finger I kind of go back and forth between using the, the the paper stump blender and my finger because I you can get different effects and I wanted to kind of push the pigment down further and really feel where it's going so that's why I was using my uh, my finger on that one this is that same green oh oh excuse me no I haven't used this green yet this is the tree green and there we go I'm going to use it on the the stem to start None of this comes from a reference photo. I have no idea if lemons even grow this way. I mean, I know they grow on trees, so I assume they would attach to a branch, but <laughs> I was just playing around and uh, just wanted to be able to include my version of what these lemons might look like. Uh, the brown that I'm using now is their color number 272, which they are calling Seeb Ross, S-E-I-B Ross, R-O-S-S, cooked brown soil I wonder if that is like a burnt umber um, that'll be interesting I might have to do some uh, some look looking on that one it's kind of a, a taupey brown though to be a, a, a burnt umber but um, I like it it's a good brown it would be really good for skin tones uh, you know different kinds of complexions and it would also certainly work very well for uh, uh, horses and uh, other animals that have brown fur uh, one of the other greens that I've used already I see is this yellow green and that's the one that's uh, on the leaves that I've used there and I'm just kind of marking in the leaves for now and then I'll figure out um, how I want to add some uh, some kind of dimension to that you'll notice that when I did that first lemon I did leave some white space for a highlight I'm going to go back in when it's all done and really emphasize those highlights with white um, and you'll also notice that when I'm working on these lemons what I'm doing is taking the pastel out and if I've used it I set it back where it came from but kind of at the angle so that I know that that's the green I used or that's the the, the yellow that I picked up um, that's very very helpful it's just a really easy tip to uh, to keep your your pastels straight that way mine are probably not put back in the original manufacturer order that I received them in uh, because I say that I do this but you know I'm human there are sometimes when I forget to do that and I just set them off to the right and then forget where they go in the box so some you know you could sit and sort things out and put things in rainbow order but uh, sometimes that's just not a priority for me <laughs> so let's see here I'm gonna go back with one of these greens this is that spring green again um, the other green the tree green was really kind of uh, difficult to make marks with um, at first and I think it's because it was a little bit harder uh, not quite as soft these are really soft like I said and you can kind of tell that when I'm when I'm drawing with them here and painting it's it's just the color goes down very very effortlessly but with that other green there was a little bit of an effort there it felt a little bit more dry um, like I said not a negative it could be something that has to do with the pigments but uh, yeah it, it was just something of note um, using this same stump here to kind of blend the branch together and I wanted to do this now so that I could kind of get a feel of where I want to add some texture to this branch this whole process is going by very very easily I'm having no issues everything's performing exactly the way that I expect it to 
um, and I'm really enjoying myself. So as far as getting out of an artist rut, <laughs> this is working for me. Um, and I mentioned the, the picture that you can't quite see, the one that's off screen there. That's a little otter floating in uh, some water that I did with uh, brush ink, a uh, brush pen ink. It's a cartridge that you fill it. It's like a fountain pen, only it's got a brush tip. Um, and that has a sepia ink in it. And then I went over it with colored pencil and I just, I had a lot of fun doing that too. So that's my big tip is, you know, get out of your, get out of your, your own head when you're stuck in art, because chances are, honestly, that's what the cause is, is that you've probably have either been thinking about one thing for too long or you're overthinking it. This is, this is just something, these are my tips that I have discovered that work for me. You know, if you have some other tip that works for you that helps you get out of an art rut, go ahead and share it in the comments below because I know that that's something that all of us could really benefit from. Um, I think the greater art community here on YouTube is wonderful and uh, so very willing to share so much valuable information. Um, and I certainly can only talk to you about my experience. So whatever experience you have, either if it's with these Paul Rubens pastels um, or with, uh, with this pith sketchbook or with getting out of an art rut, share those thoughts down below. It's always nice to, to talk about some things. This is interesting. This one is called Deep Grandmother Green. And I wonder if that would translate to, I want to say green earth, but the pigment itself looks more like a phthalo green. And like I said, I, I don't have the pigment information here, but it's very cool green. Uh, it's probably, I would guess it's a PG7, but uh, not entirely sure. One of the coolest things about pastels is that you can blend and mix for days and days. Uh, just putting any number of layers on um, and just blending it in. You can really create some neat, neat effects, very painterly strokes. Uh, so you'll notice you, I'm kind of really intentionally moving that to either my finger or this paper stump, moving it in the direction that I want it to move because these do have a bit of a texture that they leave behind. And, um, you know, it might be more so because this paper is so smooth, but keep that in mind when you're working with, uh, with, with oil pastels that it will definitely leave a texture. Oil pastels are very forgiving. They remain workable, uh, which means you probably will want to put a fixative on this when you're done. And Sennelier does make an oil pastel fixative that works very, very well. Um, either that or you want to frame it behind glass because it just, it doesn't dry. So not like an oil paint. Um, so even though you can create these beautiful painterly strokes with your, with your work, um, it's not going to end up drying like an oil paint would. So, um, just be aware of that. The other cool thing about oil pastels is that if you do make a mistake, you can scrape it up, uh, like with a paint, uh, scraper or, uh, uh, some kind of a hard nylon spatula very easy and by paint scraper i mean um you know a razor blade fitted in the, in the handle to to scrape adhesive off of windows or to scrape paint um, you could also use a palette knife very easy to uh, to lift up what you've already got here and then change it you can also go light over dark and all of these kinds of things are why I really like this set if you're looking to get into uh, pastels. Now, today on Amazon, the Paul Rubens set of oil pastels, they come in two iterations. Now, I have the set of 48. Those run $45.98, and um, they've also got a set of 72, which is only $59.98. So really good price. There's also a Lightwish set and those are square. And I know that uh, both uh, Lindsay Wyrick and uh, Miranda of Alkali Creek Art, they have both reviewed those. Um, the square shape, it's kind of like a big, like a, like a thick lipstick shape square. They are a set of 50 for only $28.98. So if you're looking to get into something, there's plenty of approachable brands out there. Artex has one that's 72 colors for $38.99. The square ones by Lightwish, though, those are the ones I want to talk about for a quick second. Uh, they're purported to be better for making uh, uh, fine lines because you can use the corner. Well, the thing about that is when you're working with a very soft oil pastel, once you use that corner, then it's no longer square. So what I like to do to clean up the edges and make, uh, make more definitive detail is to go in with a colored pencil. Now you can use an oil-based colored pencil to do this and it will work very well 
with your oil pastels. Um, today I'm going to use a Prismacolor, which is a wax base, but it also has oil in its formulation. Um, whether color pencils is oil based or wax based simply means which one it has predominantly in it from what I understand. Um, so yeah, there you have a lot of options. Uh, that, and using a different shape uh, blending stump also will let you get some detail in. So now that I've got the lemons done, I want to go in with this thalo blue and I really want to make it kind of just uh, give it a, some surface to pop. And I'm going to go close to the stem first and then kind of work my way out. Uh, mainly because right at this moment when I'm drawing, I really don't know how I want this background to look. Uh, it ended up being a, a bigger square on one side, a bigger background on one side than on the other side. And I think if I were to do this over again, I would make this uh, background rectangle just a little bit smaller. Um, but that's okay because that's what a sketchbook is for, is for experimenting. So this is another little quick tip I want to give you. Use your sketchbook for practice. Use it to be, you know, not, don't count on getting these great works of art in your sketchbook in every page. And that's also something that can really put you in a rut really fast. Take your sketchbook and think of it as a, a place where you can practice and refer back to something that you've used. Um, it's also going to be a great pictorial reference of where you were as an artist at that moment in time, which is really nice to go back and look at things. But it's also a great place to log your ideas. You know, it, when we're artists, we speak with pictures, not words, um, for this kind of art anyway. And I think being able to look back at this at this piece in my sketchbook here when I when I go back and look at it I can decide you know I really like doing this but maybe I want the background this time to be either non-existent or uh, a little more uh, organic around the edges or maybe I want to make the square much smaller so that it's kind of only encompassing or laying behind rather those the three lemons and not going all the way to the top um, but I was also kind of dealing with this thalo blue. So what I like to do is kind of make some notes uh, right there by my left index finger. I've got some notes on that other painting on the, the opposite page there. Uh, so I will try and make some notes on this one as well. This thalo blue did not go down too cooperatively. And the one thing that I do like about working with oil pastels is that you can uh, compensate for that by heating it up. So you can see I'm going to try and blend this here with uh, with the paper stump and it's just it's going okay but the pigment isn't really spreading and you can see kind of in between where I laid the pigment down that it really is pretty sheer. So this is kind of a more transparent pigment. So I'm just going to heat this up just a little bit with my uh, heat tool here and then I can go back in and blend it a lot more uh, smoothly. Now you want to be aware again of the direction of your blending stump because all of those little subtle details will pick up in the final. Uh, you can go in and put more pigment down certainly, but uh, blending it like this uh, with, uh, with your finger with the blending stump and putting in more pigment is, um, you know, and using the heat is a really good way to get that uh, larger area to be a little more smooth. Uh, but you can see this one just kind of wasn't too cooperative. And this is where I think that this is one of the reasons why this set will remain for me a practice set, even though I love Paul Rubens and I really think they're an excellent brand. Um, I don't like my work to be streaky. And that's where this thalo blue led me. Um, I still like this, you know, th this little entry in my, in my sketchbook. And uh, I enjoyed doing it, like I said, but uh, the overall streakiness of the background was a little bit of a turnoff. So let me go ahead and uh, finish playing with this with heating it up and then smoothing it out. And let's go to the end and I can show you how I cleaned up the edges around the lemons. The colored pencil that I found to most closely match this blue is this Copenhagen blue Prismacolor. Um, I'm just kind of cleaning up the edge here. And what it does is, yes, you're going to end up with some of this pastel on your pencil. So you're gonna to wanna to have something to uh, that rag handy to wipe it off. But you can see it just kind of neatens up the edge a little bit. And as I'm realizing that this is really close to the, to the edge of the paper, I think, okay, well, I think I'm just going to go back and add more of the pastel pigment down here. But you can see how uneven this background is. So th those are my only negative marks about this set, 
is that um, the the consistency between the pastels and you know it, don't expect even a set of professional pastels to be 100 percent consistent across all of your pigments because some pigments are a little bit harder than others um, however having this streakiness is not fun so that's something that i would uh, i would uh, not enjoy. If I were um, making a commission piece, I'd be very frustrated by that. Uh, but you can see going in here with the colored pencil, you can really just get in between and separate that leaf from the lemon very, very easily. I have always enjoyed using colored pencil as a way to finish and add detail to artwork. And I absolutely love that it works so well with uh, with these Paul Rubens uh, oil pastels because I do this with uh, with my other pastel sets and um, I absolutely love it and I'm so glad that this one is uh, is no exception there. So if you're going to get into pastels uh, like this, like oil pastels, um, you might want to consider picking up a, a basic set of uh, colored pencils or get the colors that you need as uh, as you're working with the, the pastel pigments so that you can get the right colors. Um, you know, Prismacolors are also always good. Uh, I certainly really appreciate the uh, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the Luminance, the um, the Derwent Lightfast. All of them are really very nice and very easy to use. So I'll just finish going around all of these little uh, areas here and just cleaning this up, and then I will be back with some final thoughts. I think overall, for an entry level set that you want to get into to just try a new medium, have fun and play with, this Paul Rubens set is really an excellent choice. But also, I don't think you'd go wrong if you picked up uh, Mungio or um, Artex, any of the others, Lightwish. Whatever one fits your budget, I think uh, you'll probably expect a very similar performance to this. Really enjoy what you're doing and, um, you know, you can have so much fun with it because you really don't need to have any kind of a special pre-treated uh, surface to work on. This is just regular sketch paper here. Um, they do make uh, oil pastel cards that you can uh, that you can buy. They call it a card, but it's like a, a thick paper with a texture in it. There's always Mitants by Canson, the pastel paper. It's uh, textured on one side, smooth on the other. But this is just a regular sketchbook, guys. You don't need anything fancy. And that, I think, is one of the reasons why working with oil pastels is so fun. Uh, you can get some certain types that blend with water. Uh, you can also get some that are made by Crayola. Um, so whatever you have in your area that works for you and gives you joy, <laughs> those are the ones to start with. And I hope I was able to show you a little bit how fun oil pastels can be and that this Paul Rubens set is really approachable and really a neat addition to your art studio. Okay, guys, I will let you go with those thoughts and uh, hope everyone is doing well, having a wonderful creative week, staying far, far away from art ruts. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>